bone targeted therapies are increasingly important in um, breast cancer, especially in the era of aromatase inhibition as a therapy. So what have you been trying to do in the study, the ABCSG18 study? You're quite right. Um, we have made great progress uh, in the adjuvant treatment of hormone receptor positive breast cancer. Virtually all patients nowadays receive aromatase inhibitors and uh, this has helped in increasing the cure rates uh, and so it's a big success story. However, there is no free lunch and the main side effects of these otherwise very successful treatments is uh, deterioration of bone health, treatment induced osteopenia, osteoporosis and even fractures. Now one of the approaches to uh, tackling that difficulty is to use bisphosphonates. Uh, however, you actually use a denosumab in this particular issue. That's correct. Um, several clinical practice guidelines nowadays advocate the use of bisphosphonates, but only for patients at high risk of fracture. And I think this is right where our trial results uh, kick in and probably change a little bit uh, how we view the whole issue. First, this is a trial which focused on bone health. And what we saw is that the actual fracture rate is much higher than uh, observed so far. Because usually in, an, in the large adjuvant AI trials, fractures are reported as side effects. We, we, we are pretty sure that we have severely underreported uh, fractures so far. So in this trial, which is really focused on bone health, fractures as a primary endpoint, we see that almost 10% of women in this situation will suffer a treatment-induced fracture at three years and almost 20% at six years, and that's quite significant. Can you describe what you did? You had uh, nearly three and a half thousand patients, didn't you? Yes, uh, it's 3,425 patients recruited to this uh, placebo-controlled, double-blind adjuvant study of denosumab versus placebo. Denosumab at the dose of 60 milligrams every six months. So that's the same dose used in osteoporosis. Um, these patients, um, and, and the result in this trial is that basically Denosumab cuts fractures in half. So the hazard ratio is 0.5. That's obviously statistically highly significant. And we have also measured a number of secondary endpoints, including bone marrow density, which is dramatically improved by the antibody. Vertebral fractures, again, cut in half, so uh, significantly reduced. And what is most important, this treatment is safe. So it's a double-blind placebo-controlled trial, and we were unable to record any differences uh, in adverse events or serious adverse events. Now, based on, on your knowledge from other studies, what was basically the difference between using this bone-targeted monoclonal antibody as compared with bisphosphonates? The first issue is that denosumab is easy to use. It's two sub-Q injections per year. Um, you know, I'm not suspicious that I would be against bisphosphonates because I have studied them uh, for the majority of my professional life but they are kind of cumbersome to use. The oral bisphosphonates are not well tolerated for gastrointestinal side effects. The IV bisphosphonates, they use chair time, they um, ha can have renal problems and all of that. So I guess, um, I mean, they are good, but the better is the enemy of the good. So I think that the Nozomap will basically develop into a new standard of care. So what are the clinical implications, in your opinion, coming out of this paper you've just reported then here at ASCO? I believe that we, we have demonstrated a benefit of a magnitude that you cannot ig ignore it in clinical practice, particularly because this treatment is so safe and it's so easy to use. Now, obviously, in different countries, there are different uh, access and reimbursement issues. They may be resolved or not in the uh, coming month. But I believe this is going to be a new standard of care pretty quickly. So what do you think cancer doctors should take home from this right now? Well, right now, I think it's just a pivotal clinical trial with interesting results. Uh, by the way, published online in The Lancet this morning. Um, and then we'll have to see how the community takes it up. Uh, we are still waiting for the effect of the antibody on recurrence, which is um, 
a secondary endpoint that we will report when data are mature. Um, but for fracture prevention, I think uh, you know the situation is pretty clear.